As China becomes globalization's unlikely defender and the Indian economy gets its growth lowered by multiple agencies, is India feeling slightly under the big shadows here in Davos? Let me get you that perspective from the very special panel of uh, prominent corporate voices, Baba Kalyani of Bharat Forge, Manish Kejriwal of Kidara Capital and Sunsitanti of Suzlon. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me. Exactly my first question, is India feeling like the poorer cousin of China since China seems to be dominating global attention here in Davos? No, I don't think so. You know, I think, look, Chinese economy has always been larger than the Indian economy for many years. So there's nothing different this year compared to the last uh, five, seven odd years. Uh, I think India has its own role uh, in the world, in the world economies. Uh, Indian economy is growing at a reasonable pace. I mean, most people that I meet here are uh, getting more and more involved in India. Uh, companies getting involved in the smart city programs uh, that the Prime Minister has put up, uh, the whole digitalization space that is happening. And of course, the latest thing is uh, the, the entire technology revolution coming out of the whole application of Industry 4.0 along with uh, artificial intelligence, smart robotics. This hasn't hit India yet, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be much faster than what we think. And you'll see a lot more companies from the West getting into, uh, into the Indian space. There was a report ca that came out yesterday. We said the largest application for robotics in the world and for Industry 4.0 applications is India and China. So the markets are there because the largest growth in manufacturing is going to happen in India, even much more than China, in the next 15, 20 odd years. Right, and we're so. going to talk about the fourth industrial revolution with you, uh, because that's something you're very closely associated on the ground with and a big theme here in Davos. But Manish, first my question is, India feeling slightly ignored. Was this supposed to be our year? No, you know, I think the unique thing about the year this year, it's the first time that uh, you've had such a large uh, Chinese delegation. So, but it's not about India versus China, as Baba was saying. This is very much China's way to step into the world stage at a time that it feels like many of the Anglo-Saxon countries are retreating, given what's going on in the US, which seems to be being a bit more isolationist, and China and uh, the UK, where you've seen Brexit happening with uh, Prime Minister May giving a very strong speech yesterday there's suddenly a role for China to play in the global stage. So I think it's the first visit by, uh, by, the, by the head, by Premier Xi, uh, into, and it's a, very large, uh, it's a very large delegation. So it's not about them being, or India being slighted, it's just, it, this is more about China versus the US and uh, global geopolitics. So I think in that context, the Indian agenda, I think, remains the same. Uh, I'm glad we're not, like previous years, splashing the facade everywhere with India everywhere it's we've, we I think the global investors financial as well as strategic believe in India as one a huge market as a source of terrific talent and that remains if you talk to the smart corporate investors looking at India we have seen the level of corporate interest strategic interest significant increase Baba and I were talking about an automotive company that we sold recently to a large Spanish company it was unheard of many other strategic uh, guys looking into India, but it's not actually, I'm actually glad it's not out there and with fireworks. We're doing it subtly, we're doing it well, and we're being uh, slightly more under the radar as we should. So there's a big difference between perception and reality. I think Manish is making that point well. But Mr. Nanti, do you feel on ground as well that it's easier to do business now with the new administration and uh, reforms in some way, while people will scream and complain, are underway? No, India is really doing uh, and transforming the last two years very well and a lot of policy framework, lot of initiatives like Make in India, Digital India, Startup, Clean India. So all these initiatives are moving in the right uh, directions and the good momentum. As far as the renewable space, I think Prime Minister has set the very ambitious target 175 gigawatt uh, installation in India. Uh, from 25 gigawatt to 175 gigawatt in the next five to six years. So it will bring a lot of investment potentiality is growing. If you let understand the last two years, what happened in a renewable uh, space. So 2.5 gigawatt to 5 gigawatt and uh, 5 gigawatt to 10 gigawatt. So it's moved the investment 2.5 billion dollar to the 5 billion dollar and 5 billion dollar to 10 billion dollar. In the last two years, the, our sector is growing in India in renewable space, 100% growth, which is never 
in the last 50 years happened like this so that shows the reality is working on a, on an end and the biggest challenge on execution side it's not just the policy but the environment on the central government and state government alliance has increased lot and because of execution is happening otherwise execution was the biggest challenge so that is where 10 gigawatt of capacity installation in the one year which last 20 years we have built only just 20 gigawatt so within a one year 10 gigawatt is going so right. it's a momentum is uh, really very good right. environment is very positive is there when we are talking about the, the world economy forum areas china presence versus india i have a very two clear point is there what is the priority for china china has a domestic demand is saturated where india is focusing more on domestic demand so we don't require a global marketing much more and China needed today the product they want to sell in the global market. So their priority is to sell the product in the market. So their job is here to market the China very well. Our interest is the domestic demands to satisfy. So our interest is to attract the investment only. Right. So we required a very limited financial people who can come and invest in our country. I think both has a different priorities and that's why the, the, the visibility is a different. But uh, we are leveraging uh, World Economic Forum very well for Indian interest. And therefore insulated from a lot of external shockers. A quick question to all of you and give me a brief comment on that. The risks right now for this year. So demonetization is a key theme much discussed. You can have a different perspective but huge uh, topic of conversation about being a shock to the Indian economy. A stronger dollar which uh, everyone envisions with the Donald Trump era. And what would happen to reforms in 2019 because many say that the Modi government will not get the upper house and there could be some uh, kind of stalling. So for from these points, to your, to your mind, how would you read that? In terms of risks, I think the risks are largely external, uh, uh, socio-political, uh, the risks with new governments coming in, in major countries in the world, the risks of uh, an event like Brexit spreading uh, across the EU. Uh, you know, those are the kind of risks, uh, medium-term risks. And then you always have uh, the war going on in Syria and its impact uh, on the geopolitical side, you know, where does Russia fit in and where does the U.S. fit in. And, I mean, we've been having those risks for a long period of time and I think those risks continue. Uh, in terms of internal risks uh, within India, I think as far as demonetization is concerned, my personal view is that's the best thing that's ever happened. Uh, uh, yes, we have had some difficulty in the month of uh, November, December, but I think history will say, uh, when we look back uh, five, ten years from now, that this was the best decision made. But you could not have made this decision after five years. Okay, it, it's just too big an economy to remove uh, so much of cash from. So I think it's it's a good thing. Third, uh, as far as reforms is concerned. I think the government is pretty much on track on reforms. I mean, if you look at their perspective plan that they have made, the 2020, 2025 perspective plan which has been put into place, is pretty much on track. Okay, on track. And um, Manish, comfortable with demonetization? You know, I'm going to get back in the overall context. I think the risks India faces is literally like the ripples on the water on a lake when you throw a stone. It's external risks. I think if you look at what's happening as the US Anglo-Saxon economies are getting more protectionist, Brexit happening, I'm actually really worried about the Middle East. I don't quite understand exactly what's going on, but the different phases between the Shia and Sunni and the complexity will definitely impact. It's already affecting the inflows of capital that our migrant workers have from the Middle East into which our economy depends on. So many external risks. I think internally, actually, we're doing pretty well. And if you look at demonetization as a sub-segment of what I think has been the biggest victory by this government has been a attack on corruption. And uh, if you look at what the Prime Minister did within a few months, he essentially removed the safety net from below many of uh, corporate India and put the screws on. And I think in the current context, it really established much more of a, play, a level playing field. And in my case, demonetization was absolutely required. Of course, the actual execution, one can complain have done a lot better, but I think people will forget about that. There will be certain sectors like real estate, maybe jewelry, which will be permanently impacted. Jewelry, I don't mind. I'll save me a bit more money on a serious, on a, on a, on a, the on a side estate, note. I'll ask you about <laughs> the real estate is later. But on the other stuff, I actually think you will see a huge spurt in, um, uh, in April or May. And I think the two big themes here, we had a couple of investments in the retail sector, 
sales have gone up because there's been an actual move from the unorganized or disorganized sector to the organized sector. So we were very surprised that numbers in November were a little bit hit, but in December we were back to normal and in fact increased because the rural, the unorganized was moving to organized. And the second big theme there is the move from rural. So rural, the rural economy has been affected. Baba will know better. Cars were not affected as much, but the two wheelers and tractors were. But again, that I see when this thing comes under control, April, May, you'll actually see a sort of a, a, a hockey stick effect of more demand coming back. And I think by December we'll forget about this. You feel you're going to forget about it soon, Mr. Nandi? Yeah, I, I think uh, the whatever the economic environment uh, India is currently, is the challenge is there. Yeah. More externally, what uh, the team has uh, talked is there. But in within that also, I see the uncertainty of the risk is the oil price. Suppose if that has to move on a upper directions, it's a virtually it's not a, the the Im impact is there. But our economy is heavily influenced by the the oil oil pricing area. As far as the demonetization, I think it's a it's a temporary impact. But it's a longer period. It's a substantial benefit. Like 15 lakhs crore is the cash in the system is there. One third cash will go back to the banking system. Not all the goes to the the operations. So that availability of the cash systems in the banking system will support to reduce the interest cost, which is more important for making in India requirement and other things. Second, we can leverage that cash to the three, four times and we can invest in our uh, infrastructure investment opportunity. I think that will stimulate uh, longer perspectives of a requirement of the country's economy. It's an extremely important uh, uh, part of the... When we are talking about internal risk area, I think next new challenge we have to prepare ourselves on execution part of the GST. Because it will be again six months some un uh, turbulence will come. We should prepare for it because any transformation happening, whether it is in our company, whether it is in a country, every time we have f see the comfort area doesn't people like to let go. So we have to move from one comfort to the very good comfort area, but transition is always difficult. So we have to prepare for that GST implementation and executions. So that may come some turbulence. But if I see the from distance, India whole system is not equipped more than 7% GDP growth to manage. So that is the biggest challenge for is there. And for the continued stability of the economy, I think 7% GDP growth is ideal for to manage the Indian economy and that take care of the our job satisfaction requirement. I think that's the moment uh, is very well for the India. You know, one, one final point Amrita, on the demonetization, which I don't want to take away lightly. I think it has truly confused some of our global investors. And it's not just the government's job to explain what happened. I think it's, uh, it's beholden on all of us uh, to, in the, every interaction we have is to really understand and explain to our global investors, strategic or financials, on what exactly are the positives. Because the, the media so far, I don't know, I'm not blaming NDTV, but I'm saying the global media as a whole has normally portrayed this quite negatively. So I think it's not so much good or bad. There's a bit of a confusion. What was done? How is it done? The people standing in lines. So I think it's beholden all of us to explain the intricacies of that and what is the short term and the longer term impacts. But it is a worry, at least the perception amongst uh, our global investors. Right. Raising questions on the implementation, maybe not the thought behind it. But thank you so very much, gentlemen. Looking like the reality on ground is far more optimistic than the headlines suggest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.